Hey, it's Jessica, and in this video I'm trying out my Derwent Ink Tense pencils for the first time. Basically the same concept as watercolor pencils, except instead of watercolor pigments, they have permanent ink inside them. I've wanted these things for years now, and I finally gave in and bought them last year on Black Friday on Special at Dick Blick. And uh, go figure, I'm only using them now in April. I figured I would make a little review slash first impressions type video about my experience with these pencils. Just a disclaimer before we begin, this video is not sponsored in any way. I bought all the supplies myself and my opinions are completely my own. I'm just going to go ahead and be completely honest, I don't have a lot of experience using water-based medium. I did dabble in watercolors as a teenager, but it's been a long time, so this is kind of a learning curve for me. I thought a sea turtle might lend itself nicely to the watery kind of texture that you can get with this medium, and for me there was also the bonus of not having to try to get the texture of fur or feathers, since like I said I am still new to this. I sketched him out on normal sketchbook paper, and then I used my light box to transfer him onto Arch's hot pressed watercolor paper. I did my line work in what I normally use, which is Prismacolor Coal Erase Pencil. The color was brown. Prismacolor is not water soluble, so I was able to paint over top of it without having to worry about it smudging. I definitely, definitely recommend swatching the Inktense pencils out before you use them and getting a feel for how the material works. The color on the pencil barrel doesn't always match the color that the ink is, and the ink before you add water versus once the water is added is like night and day. When you put the water on there, it sort of just lights up on the page. It's bold, vivid, and saturated. I found it really pleasant to work with, even just on a sensory level. I really appreciate all the variation in tone that you can get from a single color. I'm used to working with Copic markers, where you have your lights, your mid-tones, and your darks, and you can push it more in one direction or another by adding extra layers or using colorless blender, but it only goes so far. By contrast, you could probably do an entire painting from just one intense pencil, with everything from the lightest lights to the darkest darks. After I put down all the yellow, you'll see me use a light pinky brown color, and then go over top of it with a darker brown to make the scales. That's all the same pencil. It's called Matter Brown, and I think it's my favorite out of all the colors that I've tried so far. Now unlike Copic markers, you have to work light to dark with these. A little bit of ink goes a very long way, which is why I suggest starting very light and putting down layers until you build up the darkness to where it needs to be. If you make a mistake or you go too dark and the ink is still wet, you can fix it by blotting at it with a paper towel to kind of pull some of the pigment off of the page. But if you allow it to dry, then it's a little harder to fix. I feel like I went too dark on the turtle's flippers and neck area. I blended out the scales a little bit too much, which ended up covering a lot of the original lighter tones that I put down, which I wanted to retain as highlights. Now I know that Ink Tense makes a white pencil, but I did not have that one. And that one might be alright for lightening areas that have gotten too dark, but since I didn't have that option, what I ended up doing at the very end of the painting, once everything was dry, was going in with some of my Polychromos colored pencils and coloring over the areas that I didn't like with a lighter color to kind of smooth them out. I was a lot happier with how I ended up painting the shell. I feel like I definitely used more restraint and layered the colors a lot better. As you can see at the beginning of the video, I didn't buy one of the pre-made sets of Inktense pencils. Instead, I put together my own out of open stock at Blick. That's because I have specific colors that I use more heavily than primary colors that are usually available in the starter sets. My primary art subjects are pets and wildlife, so I need a lot of earth tones, a lot of yellows and golds, and a lot of greens. I ended up using eight different ink tense pencils to complete this piece. The colors are in order of appearance, sienna gold, matter brown, dark aquamarine, mild vermilion, tangerine, red oxide, and peacock blue. Of course, I will also list all the materials that I used in the description. You won't see this in the video because of my editing, but there's actually quite a bit of drying time between each layer of color, probably somewhere between 20 to 30 minutes. I found that a little bit tedious. I guess that's the case with all water-based medium though, so if I'm going to use this in the future, I definitely need to get myself a heat gun or something. I did attempt using the pencils to color onto paper that was still damp, but I wasn't really happy with how that worked out. 
I felt like the surface got a little bit scratched up. Maybe that's just the paper that I was using. And also the new color that I put down didn't really spread out when I hit it with the water. So all the waiting time was kind of a necessary evil. Did I say that I love how bright and saturated these colors are? Because I really do. And there's my helper, Rory. She's why I can't have nice things. But who needs nice things when you have cats? They're the nicest. I kept having to pick cat hair out of the wet ink after this. One of the biggest downsides that I've heard in regards to these Inktense pencils is that the colors are not particularly light fast. Light fastness basically refers to whether or not the colors will fade when exposed to light over time. Now for me that's not too big of a deal because my Copic markers are unfortunately not very light fast either. Although I do sometimes have to question my life choices in that I've spent so much money on art supplies that aren't inherently light fast. I'm sure one day it's going to catch up with me. That's one of the reasons why, even though I really like working with these Inktense pencils, I think that once I get a good set of watercolors, I will probably just use those instead. The first color blue I'm putting down for the background is Peacock Blue. I wanted to use something a little bit different than the shadows that you see on the bottom of the turtle. However, I do end up going back and layering some dark aquamarine over the peacock blue so that the colors still have some level of connectedness and uniformity. My first idea was to try to do a graded wash in the background, but it quickly became clear that that wasn't going to happen. I think the area was too big and my brush was too small. Also, I would have needed some sort of masking fluid so that I could work more quickly around the turtle. So I just ended up using the ink to build up alternating dark and light areas of blue. I like the texture that it ended up giving. I'm not gonna lie, this part, just randomly spreading a whole lot of ink around, was a lot of fun. I've tried to speed it up a lot though so that it doesn't get too boring to watch. Now here's the dark aquamarine that I was talking about, just kind of pulling everything together. I mentioned wanting to get on a regular posting schedule in my last video. What I'm thinking right now is posting a video every other Sunday. Obviously there'll be times where I can't, but I think that right now that's a good goal for me. I'd like to post every week, but right now I still rely on my wife's help editing my videos, so I need to get a little bit more self-sufficient before that's a possibility. I do need to give a little shout out here. Thank you so much, Courtney, for helping me with my videos and for letting me steal your computer for hours at a time to work on them. It means a lot to me that you support my dreams, even if those dreams are just to have a mildly successful YouTube art channel. And on that note, thank you to all of you who have subscribed so far as well. I do appreciate the time that you're taking to watch my silly content. What I'm doing here, as I previously mentioned, is using my Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. I believe the colors that I used the most were cream and light flesh, and I'm putting back some of the highlights that I lost by going too dark with my ink earlier. And it looks like we are out of time. Thank you for sticking with me through this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like or a comment, or even subscribing to my channel. Have you tried the Inktense pencils? If so, let me know what you think. See you next time!